Okay, I have a large piece of fabric on my work table and I've kind of made sure that it's no bigger than my work table because I'm kind of limited in my space as to where I can work. Um, but basically, it's about a yard and a half um, long and it's probably around 42 inches wide. Um, actually, no, it's probably about 60 inches wide. It, it is 100% cotton quilting fabric. I just can't tell you exactly which, which brand it is. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I want to create my first line all the way across. And this is to mark out, you know, the first line of horizontal designs. So basically, you know, I want to be able to mark these markings for that center 12 inches apart from each other on the first line, and then I'll be able to, to create the next um, layers from there. So what I'm going to do is I actually have the, um, the grain line going horizontal on my, on my um, work table here, and I'm going to line my yardstick up with the very edge of that grain line before it starts fraying on the edge. And I'm just going to give myself um, a 10 inch mark here that, you know, at least if I start 10 inches in, I've got some border around it. Um, so what I'm going to do is go across this piece of fabric here at the top and mark out my 10 inch line. And what I'm using is actually um, one of the Aquarelle Stabilo uh, water soluble pencils here. I know I should probably be using a, a fabric marker that will go away, but Again, I'm going to be um, dyeing this fabric so I know that it's not going to it's not going to show in the end. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, so here, I'm just going to mark 10 inches down from the edge of that fabric, all the way across. And now what I'm going to do is take my yardstick and connect the dots and make my first straight line. And I'm going to do this very lightly. If I can find the lines. And I'm trying not to show you me. Okay, so there's my first line. Now remember, the next line is going to be eight and a half inches away from that first line. Okay, so now I have marked eight and a half inches down from my first line, so that's our vertical repeat. And now what I want to do is I want to find that six inch mark in between the major medallions from up here. So I'm going to place one ruler here. And you can see it's the 12 inch um, repeat here. And using the number six, because that's where the center mark is going to be for my next medallion. So if I place this here, and I place this here, then you'll see, actually, let's place it in the way that we stenciled it. Okay. So this one needs to come in here at six inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my yardstick here and I'm going to keep it vertical perpendicular to the very edge of the fabric there and on the number six I'm just going to lay this down straight and where it intersects this line and I can kind of see I'm off a little bit um, I'm just going to place that that little mark there so this is my first mark for the half drop, our quasi half drop. So this is where that, that's going to fall. So now we want to measure 12 inches over because the repeat horizontally is still 12 inches. So I'm going to mark out this line in the 12 inch mark as well. 
and I'm going to continue to repeat this down the entire piece of fabric. So what I want to do is I want to lay out those registration marks first before I start stenciling so that I know I can just go right along and stencil each one of these designs um, right on those marks that I've already created and that'll kind of help speed up the process a little bit of covering such a wide area of fabric. So, um, so this is the next step. I am going through the entire piece of fabric here and I'm marking out my, my 12 inches across um, one line alternating with six inches down my 12 inch marks here that are um, halfway in or quasi halfway in. Anyways, so you'll see what I'm doing and I got to get that done and then I'll be back to you showing you how I'm going to begin stenciling on my fabric. So now that I have my entire piece of fabric marked out, um, I'm going to begin stenciling using this color magnet product which is made by Jacquard and I've already um, tried this before using RIT dyes and it seems to work. You're supposed to use it with Jacquard's, um, Jacquard's dyes um, but I don't, I don't like to do a lot of mixing to dye or anything like that so I'm using RIT and um, what this product does, it's really cool and my friend Terry had, um, had brought it to my attention is that when you stencil with it, it also comes in this handy little um, pen with a sponge applicator on it. Um, but when you stencil with it, you're actually um, you're creating what's going to happen. What's going to happen to this is basically the color that you dye this piece of fabric with this stenciled on it. The color that's uh, that um, is going to be where you've stenciled the color magnet. Um, that color intensifies. So let me say that again. Basically, you're going to be dyeing this entire piece of fabric after you've stenciled with color magnet. And color magnet needs to dry. So it needs to be um, completely dry before you put the fabric in your dye bath. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is kind of walk through um, how I'm actually going to attempt to stencil this entire piece of fabric. Uh, but using a more methodical, um, methodical uh, way to be able to kind of get parts of it dry before I move on to the next parts. So basically, once again, color magnet is going to, if I dye this pink, which I, I don't know what color I'm using yet, um, but if I dye this pink, and what's going to happen is that all of these stenciled images are going to end up um, a lot more dense in color than the area around it. So the fabric's going to absorb the color and what's going to happen is this area will absorb the color more. So you're going to have a monochromatic kind of um, application here where you've, got, where you've got pink in the background and then darker pink on the stenciled images. And I think that monochromatic um, effect is really cool and um, when I think about how I would use this going forward, I would have um, a large piece of fabric that I could either incorporate into an art quilt or um, a piece of wearable art. And before I even get to that point, if I have, um, if there's a subtle gradation in color tone from the back to the to the central images that are stenciled. Um, and this isn't too dark, you have the ability to embellish all over this and go back in with your stencil and add maybe some Lumiere paint on the edges of, of the design, things like that, or hand stitching, machine stitching. So um, rather, than, rather than actually stencil using fabric paint through this, we're going to try this method using the color magnet. So what I'm going to do is, um, as a first step, I've actually poured out some of my color magnet in a little bowl here and this is a very liquid, um, very liquid, you can kind of tell, um, product here. And what I'm going to do is all over my entire fabric I'm going to start by only stenciling this center circle. So this is going to allow me to be able to um, to then go in and do the rest of these pieces around it and actually if I can get this center 
part done on each mark. It's going to help me do it faster and this will be semi-dried before I start going on and, um, and rotating this design for the circle itself. So basically what I'm going to do here is on each marking I'm going to change the position of my center circle just because it has that, that additional line in the middle of it. Um, so instead of using it in exactly the same position at each point, I'm going to change it up a little bit and just turn it so that that line appears in different places, just to give it some um, a little bit more interest. So here I'm going to center my first mark in um, my circle here, the circle center, and I'm just going to load up a foam brush, and I'm using this foam brush because I feel like I'm going to have a little more control over how much I'm actually applying. Um, I don't want to soak the entire brush, but I want to make sure that there's enough on there. So I'm going to hold my stencil, and I'm going to kind of tap and drag. I don't want to drag it underneath those lines, so I'm going to kind of tap and, and just drag it a little bit without really stretching that fabric hardly at all. But the challenge here is that you want to be able to cover the entire area with enough of this so it dries um, completely and doesn't leave kind of spots in the middle of, of your design. So you can see here that the liquid is, is a, um, a light yellow color. So this is going to be able to help you as you stencil it onto white fabric. And you can see it's already starting to bleed out a little bit here, so I may lose some of that, some of that decorative line. Um, but I'm going to move on and I'm going to do this to each of my center marks first across my entire piece of fabric. Um, so again, I'm just going to start. I'm probably going to push harder towards the middle because then and stay a little bit lighter towards the edges and maybe just smooth the edges from the outside in so that I don't can avoid some of that bleeding. Um, so again, you just want to make sure that you've covered the entire area or else um, you'll have some markings that, um, and it could come out, it could look great that way. So. There just might be some inconsistency in how that dye is absorbed in that area based on how much uh, color magnet you've actually got on the fabric. So that one's a little bit better being careful around this edge here. Um, so anyways, I am going to continue across my entire, my entire piece of fabric doing just the center marks. And then after that, I'm going to be able to go in, place my place my, um, the outside of the stencil and mark that and then go around and stencil those pieces as well with the color magnet. So this is going to take a while. I will um, catch back up with you after I've done that in between um, stages so you can see where I've got just the center marks and before I start adding the additional, um, the additional parts around the stencil. Okay, I'm back in the studio and my first um, stenciling of the color magnet has dried and um, it looks a little bubbly but I'm fine with that. I actually had a big piece of paper um, underneath my piece of fabric while I was stenciling the color magnet um, and this works really well to have this set up on a table that's large enough that you can move the entire fabric and paper together so when you move your fabric you're not shifting the paper piece and that way you're not spreading the color magnet underneath that piece of fabric for it to you know perhaps come through on in an area where you didn't intentionally want to stencil so what I'm doing right now is my next pass at stenciling is going to be to, to add these um, the design lines, the areas around the center of those of those images. I want to call it a flower, but it's not really a flower, but it's kind of a distress flower. So however you really want to consider it is up to you. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm still using my, my water soluble um, Stabilo pencil. And I'm not worried about my pencil marks again. Um, I think that that's just going to dissolve completely when 
when the fabric goes into the dye bath um, since it's water soluble. So I'm anticipating this will happen. If it doesn't happen, then I'll have to deal with the, uh, with the results and, and go from there and change it up the next time. So you're with me while I'm actually experimenting through this process. So what I'm doing now is I'm centering my uh, pivot point on the mark that I made that's right in the center of the circle. And I'm a little bit off this line and I'm doing that because now that I look at that dried stencil part, I'm like, is that actually in the middle of the circle or not? So actually I'm setting my, my pivot point just above that line, that guideline that we created. So now I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna mark those registration marks so that I can then start stenciling the um, the color magnet again and I'm going to be covering the in, the entire rest of the fabric um, stenciling this way so that I can finish that up and prepare my fabric for the dye bath and again I'm going to be using RIT dyes um, I'm not a big fan of mixing dyes, um, things like that. So, so RIT will be the thing that I use and, um, and I've already tried that with the color magnet and I know that it works. So again, I've got more of my color magnet in a little bowl here and I'm using my small sponge brush again because I feel like I can have more control that way. And I'm going to position my my stencil right here on those registration marks and hold my stencil down and then just start stenciling along here with the color magnet and again this is a very liquid type um, type product so it will bleed a little bit if you put too much on at one time um, I'm, I'm applying this very lightly and my brush is kind of pretty loaded with um, with the product. So I just want to make sure that I get all those areas soaking wet, not soaking wet, but covered. Um, and then I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to move it on to the next registration mark. Line up my registration marks here and here and again go in and start applying that product through the stencil. So I am going to continue doing this process over the entire piece of fabric here so that I can hang that up to dry and um, prepare my dye bath so that I can put this in and, and go through the final stages of, of creating my repeat pattern design using my stencils on a dyed piece of fabric. So here's my little registration mark. And I can see the one up here as well. So I'm just making sure that those are in the area. And at some point you're gonna to need to stop to add more of the color magnet to your brush. Um, and also it's a really good idea if um, before you start using this, you may wanna just tape off the areas that you don't want to, um, that you're afraid you might stencil over, you know, as you're doing this. So the whole idea would be to avoid having any random marks um, outside of the expected stencil area so that you don't have um, the results of these really color charged areas um, where the, the dye is going to concentrate. Um, and you'll see. But of course, this is it's a uh, interesting method. It's an interesting product. And nothing's perfect and I don't ever aim for perfection so I'm having fun with it and see how the results come out. So after I have finished um, stenciling all of my fabric I'll let you see it as it's dried before it goes into the, into the dye bath. Well, we're at the end of our process. I'm sorry I didn't include a photo of the fabric after it was completely stenciled before 
putting it in the dye bath. But basically, um, this was a successful um, stenciling project on how to create and space out repeat patterns using the stencils. So the one thing that I do want to um, discuss is that my Stabilo um, water-soluble pencil marks did not disappear as I anticipated they might. Um, so basically, this is a great teaching piece. You can see the look and feel of of the color magnet um, used with the stencils and this stencil in the Anastasia collection is very forgiving that way so it already has that kind of distressed look so if some of the images um, the areas blend together and stuff it, it's not it's not a big deal it just maintains the overall look and feel of that stencil design so I highly recommend doing this I had used Rit dye in the dye bath um, just following the users the instructions on their website for using a stovetop um, stovetop dye bath um, process and it worked really well and you can see the color magnet I think uh, I'm the biggest fan of the color magnet because I just think this creates such a fabulous monochromatic overall look and feel very subtle and um, yet it picks up the details of the stencil so well so definitely try this at home you definitely want a large workspace to try and stencil all this on so um, get a big table and have a go at it <laughs>